drops like lemon drops High above the chimney top That's where you find me Oh, somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly And the dream that you did to Trees of green and red roses too I'll watch them bloom for me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful world Well I see skies of blue And I see clouds of white and the bright of day I like the dark and I think to myself what a wonderful world the colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people passing by I see friends shaking and singing Long road, dark night, nothing but headlights I'll see some bright lights when I get home to you Framed in your doorway with your arms open wide I'll hold you in my arms and fold you inside And I wanna tell you, come rain or come shine That I'll always be your love if you'll always be mine (laughs) 
Sometimes I wonder what do you see in me? Is it someone you're wishing or hoping I'll be? Sometimes I wonder I can't help myself. Will your love go someplace with somebody else? And I want to tell you, come rain or come shine, that I'll always be your love if you'll always be mine. I want to tell you, come rain or come shine, that I'll always be your love if you'll always be mine. We've come together today in the presence of God to celebrate the union of Adam Ortwein and Aaron Brown in marriage. It has been my privilege to meet with Adam and Aaron several times over the last few months to share with them God's plan for marriage from the scriptures. God set up the institution of marriage to be a metaphor for Christ's relationship with his bride, the church. In that relationship, there is a love from Christ that is not based on performance, is not based on beauty, is not based on the church's feeling of worth, it is simply and only based on Christ's own love and character. In that kind of love, there is freedom, there is security, and there is the opportunity to be who you were created to be. It is that kind of love that you should, should strive to have for each other in doing. The world around you will marvel because they catch the glimpse of the perfect love of Christ. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special day to celebrate the marriage of Adam and Aaron. As we walk through the ceremony, would you remind us of the love that you have poured out on us in the person and work of Christ? May you respond to you enjoy, faithful, and trust. Amen. Who gives this woman to be married? Her mother and I. You may be seated. Committed 
Long after the weightless feeling has been lost, and we are heavy and pregnant with life and all of the storms that it brings, and when this land darkens, and the hurricane comes, and the trees lean and give way to the swirling wind, the sky will make way for us, and I will not leave you. I will store storm water in my palms for you to drink, fall, and crack my hull open to you. Sometimes love means the wind will call for us and test our endurance. See how many falls it takes to jostle us with our body and our spirit when we only respond in the world watching us in awe as we tumble so graceful, ready to give ourselves to the action of loving because we know that falling in love is the same as rain approaching and watering the earth with all of itself, preserving nothing. When it seems like the sky is collapsing, there is no place I would rather be than wrapped around you. And when our chest is too swollen to contain our desire, we will burst, fall and make love across this earth, pour ourselves into everything and watch it grow. This cycle will never stop our friend. Loving the way water loves the earth. We are raining, falling in love all over again. And we don't even know. Oh my gosh, Richard. <laughs> I almost think I don't need to, need to speak after that. Like that was, I will, but I think, it, um, guys, there's not words I can speak to say how much you guys need to do and how honored I am to just stand here before you and join you together. The second chapter of Genesis, the story of God creating man and woman, gives us great encouragement for our marriages. With the rest of creation, God spoke it and it was. But he stops when making man and woman. God stops and says, let us make man in our own image. That is special. God imparted some of his transferable characteristics into us. One of which is to be relational. God is Father. God is Son. God is Holy Spirit. Exist in perfect relationship with each other and have existed this way from eternity past. When he created man and woman, he made them in need of relationship. That is why, as you read through the creation story, the first time something isn't good is when Adam doesn't have a partner. Now Adam had just spent some of the... <laughs> I was waiting for you guys to get that, but, you know. Adam spent some, ser some serious time had naming all the animals. And when he sees Eve, he says, this is, this is the last... At this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. That is a statement of pure joy and excitement. I know Adam did that with Aaron. You see, God knew Adam's need. He knew Eve's need. He gave Adam his ezer, which means indispensable companion. And logic would dictate that this relationship went always. Went both ways, I'm sorry. Moreover, we see that God was intimately acquainted with their real needs and wanted to provide for them and bless them. And so he does, does with you. This chapter is so full of very intimate language. When God creates man and woman, he doesn't just speak them into existence. He figuratively bends down and gets his hands dirty. Forming them out of the dirt, he gets face to face with them, breathing life into their nostrils. He gets his hands bloody. He's not removed in a loft while creating man and woman. This is a beautiful picture of how intimately involved God is. God wants to be in your world. And I lost my place. <laughs> and and it, th and this is always important for you guys to always see. That God is not separate from us. He is intimate with us. And he is always there. And finally here in, in Genesis 2, we see the first wedding ceremony instituted, performed and ordained by God. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. It is a covenant relationship, a legal contract by which two people pledge themselves to one another. Adam, I have had the pleasure to get to know you as a coworker, but not just a coworker, as a really good friend. You have been a man of just pure honesty, humor, and just creative juices flowing everywhere. 
<laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, and my favorite memory of you is when I would always try to get you off your diet and like give you anything and, and everything that I knew you wanted, but that you shouldn't have. And you'd say to me, I can't, Aaron will know. <laughs> and I would be like, how? She's not here. I'm not going to tell her. And he, with his face kind of perked up, he'd say, because I tell her. I can't ever lie to that woman. And I remember being so impressed, just so utterly impressed with how much you respect, love, and cherish this woman. And I see it as a wonderful example about the two of you being coming one. Aaron, my wife and I have had so much joy in getting to know you, getting to see those essence of how you, what you bring to Adam and what Adam brings to you. You are this el element of pure heart. You bring calming peace to the whirlwind, which is Adam. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I have never lacked in respect. So now what I would like to do is ask you a few questions. Only one answer. <laughs> Adam and Aaron, have you come here by faith, and will you give yourselves faithfully and without reservation to each other in marriage? Yes. Will you love and <laughs> I will take that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Will you love, honor, and believe the best in each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? You please face each other. She's much prettier than I am. <laughs> Adam, will you repeat after me? Okay. I, Adam. I, Adam. Take you, Aaron. Take you, Aaron. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Now, Aaron, will you repeat after me? I, Aaron. Take you, Adam. To be my husband, I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you, honor you all the days of my life. Would you please take your rings from your best man? <laughs> Adam, will you place your ring on Aaron's finger? Now, Aaron, will you place uh, your finger on Adam's? Or your, your ring on Adam's? <laughs> Please put it on his finger. <laughs> Regardless of what you have faced as individuals or whatever you will face as a couple, I believe that God wants to, you to honor these vows and commitments to your, which your ring stand as a symbol to remind you. I also believe that you must surrender yourselves to God to be desperately dependent on him to fashion you into the person he wants you to be. As you grow in dependence on the Lord, you will find an increasing capacity for selfless love for each other. Now as you combine your sand together, let the mixture be another symbol, like your rings, to symbolize the two becoming one and inseparable. As you watch the colors come together, reflect on the vows and commitments you have made to each other. <laughs>
thank you that the love you demonstrate on the cross never fails. May that same sacrificial love be demonstrated daily between Adam and Aaron. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> For as much as you and Adam, Aaron, have openly pledged yourselves to be one another in love and faithfulness in the presence of God, and before these witnesses, and having confirmed these by giving each other and receiving of rings, I, as a minister of the gospel of Christ, pronounce you husband and wife. It is my great pleasure to present to you for the first time Mr. Adam and Aaron Ortwine. invitation to the reception proceeding right after this to the big red barn there are three ways to get there your own car a shuttle or my personal favorite a hayride <laughs> so you are dismissed